do your shins hurt whenever you start to run consistently again or whenever you start a marathon training cycle? Are you a runner who's been frustrated in the past that whenever you try to get faster or you try to run longer, you just can't do it because you get injured and then you get frustrated and then you're not able to get those mental clearing miles in and just go out for a run. You may have started to read about shin splints in runners and you thought that maybe you should just stop running or, you know, you might have tried the old ice like let's, you know, take three days off, try to do it again, or you might have even tried Advil and it all sounds great. But the problem is when you start running again and building up those long runs, that same pain comes back. And now you just think you're not meant to be a runner or you're just running through pain because you don't want to stop again. So today I want to talk about what are shin splints? Why do runners get shin splints? And what are the signs and symptoms of shin splints to help you find out if that's actually what you have going on? If this is our first introduction, first off, welcome. I'm Dr. Dwayne Scotty. I'm a running physical therapist, coach, educator, founder of Spark Healthy Runner. And my mission is to preserve the health and longevity of runners everywhere by allowing them to get stronger, run faster, and enjoy lifelong injury-free running. And everything that we're going to be talking about today, by the way, I have a freebie that really breaks everything down that we're going to be talking about with shin splints. And it's our really our latest updated Spark Healthy Runner free resource. I share with you the specific strategies to get back to running without shin pain and keep it from coming back again. And you'll get answers to the following questions of you know, what are shin splints, but then is there treatment for shin splints? And what are the specific actionable strategies to treat shin splints? And then how do you prevent shin splints from happening again? So I've done a training on that. There's a video linked within this free ebook. So make sure you grab the download wherever you're listening to this and click on that link so you can get that information. And just to provide some context here, after you know treating and helping runners for over 20 years at a running physical therapist and coach that I've really come up with a system and a strategy that have been the kind of the true tried tested uh, strategies that I've really implemented with the runners that I work with on a one-on-one basis to really get over their shin splints and you know finally finally say like peace out forever and not need to get them the next time they start training. So you're going to get those specific tactics within our ultimate free guide to running healthy without shin pain. So you can get over anterior shin splints or medial tibial stress syndrome. And I have how-to videos of the specific exercises that are my go-to strategies and exercises for getting over shin splints. So you will get that in your download. And if you're a podcast listener and you want to learn about my five best shin splint exercises, um, check out episode 172 on the Healthy Runner podcast to get those exercises so you can stop having shin pain and don't have to worry about it coming back again. And I'm just like super excited because number one, I got my model out here for those not uh, watching the video version of this. We have our, our shin model, and I'm going to get into some, uh, some of these muscles and show you exactly what is happening with shin splints. But it's also a super exciting time. I'm just going to hold because I'm Italian. I need to like talk with my hands here. Um, it's been a super exciting time in the Scotty household. At the time of this recording, it is the first week in March, and there's been a lot going on. We're like in full-fledged volleyball season, so both my girls play travel volleyball. So the last three weekends actually have been quite chaotic as we've been traveling to a different city um, each and every week. Actually, not a different city. I've been traveling to a city each and every week. We're in Providence. Uh, first, I was in Boston for our national conference. Then I went from there to Providence and then to Boston and then back to Boston again. So we're kind of getting in full-fledged um, volleyball season, but I did get an, a bunch of nice runs along the Charles River there in Boston and some exploration runs along the Freedom Trail. So that was super cool. But 
a lot going on in the Scotty household. Give, give you guys a little family update here. My oldest daughter uh, did decide to go to college down in Florida. Um, so she will be going to Florida Gulf Coast University. Uh, so any runners listening to this right now who live down there, uh, maybe we can catch up because I'll definitely be visiting her uh, pretty frequently down there. But super exciting, a lot going on, a lot of changes. And honestly, this has been a season of reflection for me um, during these winter months. And we really only get one chance at this human experience. And I have so much that I want to share with you um, as I will be doubling down on really my passion and I can't wait to share with you like the exciting um, news that I will have coming out shortly and the new community that we're going to be starting at Spark Healthy Runner. So stay tuned for honestly some really exciting changes and ways that I'm going to really be able to have an impact um, within our running community, even to a greater extent than we've had thus far. So super excited about that. I uh, can't share all the details yet, but I will. Uh, I can't wait to actually uh, share them with you because I am super excited and I think it's going to be really, really good um, in 2024 to help your running. Um, and so you can be able to like get stronger, get faster and enjoy lifelong injury free running, because as you know, that's what we're all about here at Spark Healthy Runner. So let's get into uh, this shin splint topic today. And, you know, you might've been running and you're like, what the heck is this pain going on um, that I'm having in my shin? It will most likely be on the inside part of your shin bone or like right on the bone. And you can usually get it right in the middle of the bone here or on the, usually the lower third of this bone. You can also get shin pain on the outside front of the bone. This is our muscle, our anterior tibialis muscle. The muscle and the connective tissue that is usually associated with shin splints is the connections between the posterior tibialis muscle here, the fascial connection. So that's like our saran wrap around our muscles as they kind of go into what we call the periosteum and the bone itself. And what's happening here is that there are these micro tears right? In the muscle, the outer bone tissue on the front of your leg and the front of your shin. And it is just that these tissues have been getting stressed with your running. And this really happens when the bone and the muscle undergo a little too much stress, um, a little too much soon that causes you to have pain. And this pain is really going to start, you know, when you're running, um, and after your run. And if it is, this is so common in those that are just starting out with running. So our beginner runners, and if you're a beginner runner, by the way, and you want to really avoid getting shin pain or you want to get over shin pain, definitely also download our how to guide to start running and to do it in the healthy way, um, a healthy manner. Um, we have a whole guide on how to do that the right way, because we really feel that, you know, we've all made those like common errors when we started running. I made them um, and many, many people do. So we created a guide on how to start running. It's like complete guide for beginners. So if you go to learn.sparkhealthyrunner.com forward slash, um, no forward slash, just learn.sparkhealthyrunner.com. You're going to be able to see our eBooks there and you will be able to get the uh, how to start running guide. So make sure you check that out if you're a beginner, but it is all a matter of that we haven't allowed our bodies to adapt to the demands of running yet. So we kind of call this like too much too soon. And it's more of this like reaction that we get in, you know, our shin bone. And this is a common, like what we call overuse injury. And the reason why, you know, us as runners can do this is because, you know, we probably start running too frequently. Maybe we try to go out there and run five days a week because you set a health goal to get out there and run five days a week. Or you might go out there and say, you know what? I'm used to doing 30 minutes of exercise in the gym. I'm used to doing my spinning class for an hour. And you're like, let me go out and run for an hour. 
So your duration is a little too much than what the tissues can handle, or most commonly, it's your intensity. So you go out there and you're running too fast because what you've always known about running is that, you know what, running should feel hard. And whenever I used to run, when maybe I was involved in sports or when I ran as a kid, you know, it was like punishment and it should feel like terrible. It should feel hard. So you just associate that with running now as an adult and you're going too fast. And so that's like the intensity is too much. So whenever we're increasing or we get a spike in training duration, frequency, intensity, that's when our tissues are going to fight back and be at increased risk for getting shin splints. And, you know, this is really um, most common where we start to see it in runners who are either having some faulty um, running form errors. So overstriding is a super common one where we're kicking our leg out in front of us. And in our guide, I have a nice little picture of, you know, what overstriding looks like. But if you really envision kind of kicking the leg out where you're straightening your knee, you're smacking your heel on the ground and you're trying to like run with these long strides and your heels hitting the ground and all those forces are coming up through your shin bone. So that's kind of like one of the common errors or you're actually collapsing up at the hip and your hip muscles up at the side of your hip, especially the glute medius muscle and your glutes are a little weak and they're not used to stabilizing your pelvis on one leg and you get this hip drop that we talk about. So, you know, those are the two most common areas that I really pick up on. Like when I work with runners who have shin splints, we always go through a gait analysis, running assessment, and take videos, explain how to do that. We analyze the videos together um, through our call virtually. We can go frame by frame. It's actually better than in person. So a lot of people have a misconception that the best gait analysis needs to be done in person. Um, even if I were to see someone in person and when I used to see clients in person, I take video of it. And then we actually look at it on my computer screen or my phone. So um just sharing that little misconception there. But the two most common like running form errors are those that overstriding or you're getting this kind of pelvic drop or hip drop. And I feel like, you know, that in combination with the doing too much too soon is like why runners get shin splints to begin with. So what are the signs and symptoms? Like what do shin splints present like? You know, what are you going to feel? Um, it's really usually described as this achy, sore, could be tender um, sensation along the inner lower leg bone, so the tibia, right in this area here. Um, there could be a little bit of swelling throughout. Um, at first, the pain is going to really be present with running. And then after a while, if it kind of keeps coming back and it's not going away, you're going to notice that you're getting this pain that lingers after you're done running. So not only, you know, do your shins start hurting when you're running, but it's also lasting for like two hours. It's also lasting for like four hours, especially if you have a job that requires you to be on your feet all day, right? Or especially if you're like walking a lot on hard surfaces throughout the rest of your day. Um, so that's really what most people will describe. The other thing, I get a lot of clients who do this, um, is they, they poke at where the pain is and they're like, yes, it's painful right here. Like I have pain right on the bone. And a lot of us actually who don't have shin pain and shin splints, who would have never known we had shin splints who are running. If you do that yourself and poke at your shins, like I'm doing that right now at a nice little speed work session uh, yesterday where I did some 5K pace intervals as I'm getting ready for my first ever actually uh, 5K specific training in like many, many years. I've been focusing on the marathon, half marathon, um, and I have this little training block that I'm going to really double down and build up speed. And I have this 5K training block. So I'm starting to work on some faster running for the first time coming out of base training phase uh, these past two months after I finished the Dopey Challenge. But I digress, right? If I poke at my shin here, like it's going to be tender. It's not going to feel great. So I guess first point is that's totally normal. 
and don't always associate you poking at your shin area as whether or not your shin splints are getting better. So there's not like a direct correlation there. But it is this like achy, more of an achy, dull, throbby type pain. Uh, most of my runners will say who are having this um, type of shin pain. You know, there is not any numbness and tingling. So if you're getting numbness and tingling, it is not shin splints. And it is not sharp pain. If you're getting sharp pain that is super localized to one area, right? That is something that you want to make sure is not a bone stress injury. Now, shin splints, if left untreated and you've had it for a really long time and keeps getting worse, will eventually progress to this kind of like inflammation around the connection to the bone that will actually add to a bone stress injury where we have a bone um, reaction and then that can progress to a stress fracture. So that's kind of the continuum if you left it untreated. So hopefully you will not leave it untreated now that you're listening to this. You'll download my guide on how to get rid of shin uh, pain for good because it is not only a matter of resting that is going to get rid of your shin pain. You really need to, and again, I get into all the details in the guide and the previous training, but you really need to look at different components of really balancing your training appropriately, allowing for proper recovery in between your training, looking at your running form and seeing are there corrections that can be made to decrease the stress to the shins. And then yes, strengthening specific muscles in the shins and up at the hips to prevent some of the the common contributing factors. Um, But it really is the training errors that I find that most runners are really struggling with. And they go in this constant cycle of getting fixed and going to physical therapy or going to see their chiropractor and they feel good in the short term. They stop running for three to four weeks and then it always comes back. So the key to kind of getting this better in the long term, guys, is going to be getting down to those contributing factors and really correcting the training errors. So. This one was a real short one. I wanted to hop on here real quick just because I've had a bunch of runners who have started out the new year um, and they've been getting some shin pain. And this is one of those injuries that is so easy, honestly, to overcome. And it is not one of these injuries that's like, I can never be a runner. Like this can easily be overcome with the right strategies. So I want to kind of instill some hope in you that you can get over these injuries. And if Honestly, if this has been helpful for you, first off, if you're watching the video version on YouTube, like, can you go ahead and like this just because that will help me be able to create more content like this to reach more runners. So you realize that, Hey, like I don't have to stop running and doing the thing I love. Like I can actually be a runner so we can kind of educate more runners just like you. Um, that would be super helpful. Thank you in advance. Um, and if you really are looking for the specific strategies and like you've been struggling with shin splints for quite some time now and you want clarity and focus and you've, you know, maybe Googled or YouTube a bunch of exercises you've been trying, you've been going to PT and you're just not getting better. Um, like that's exactly what we do with our spark healthy runner coaching program, where we teach you how to grow as a runner, not only to get consistent with your running, but to really be able to do it in a healthy manner and crush whatever running goal it is that you have, whether it is to like run your first 5k or it is to actually like run a marathon, um, because that's been like a super dream of yours and, you know, myself and, you know, the run coaching team that we have really have, um, you know, your best interest in mind where we act as your guide in mastering the six keys to your running journey. And that's really mindset, strength training, structured run plan, nutrition, recovery, and a race plan. And honestly, when you execute these key steps in your running journey, you're not only going to feel more confident that you're going to get stronger and faster, but you're going to stay healthy along the way and enjoy the process. And you're going to be able to crush some races. Like you're going to be an adult and be like, Hey, you know what? I can actually be a little competitive here right? You can bring back some of those competitive days to our younger years. Um, 
And honestly, you're going to be stronger. Just like, you know, I use the analogy of like six steps to growing as a runner is like six steps, like building a home. And, you know, we all want like a durable home that lasts forever requiring little maintenance, right? Like who in the heck wants to pay contractors every couple of months because something's breaking down, right? You don't want that for your body. And if shin splints has been the thing that's been like breaking down your body because you've been stopping running, that's what we take care of. That's what we clarify. And I just want to share just a couple of um, stories, honestly, of recent clients or winners that have been in our Healthy Runner coaching program. Dipti is one of them. And she actually uh, just wrote about her experience. And I just want to share those with you because she says like, I don't have enough words to express the gratitude um, toward Dwayne and the Spark Healthy Runner program. When she started working with me, she was dealing with chronic shin splints, posterior tibial tendonitis for almost a year. She had worked with multiple other coaches and physical therapists with little success. And she was at the point of almost giving up her love for running. And uh, she had some nice things to say about me that was kind, thoughtful, thank you so much, knowledgeable as both a physical therapist and a runner um, and a run coach. But our first virtual meeting lasted two hours because he was so meticulous in uh, my assessment. And that's what I definitely pride myself on. I just actually onboarded a new client last night and same thing. It was like two hours and I really enjoy, I love, I love the process of really analyzing all aspects that are really coming into play and designing your program that's not cookie cutter, that is actually specific to what you need to focus on and get clarity right now. Sorry, I digress. Um, so going back to Dipti, she said about the first session um, that the strength and running program is progressive and created so you can continue to build up strength and mileage as you heal. Strength program is unique, effective, and fun. Additionally, his warm-up routine is awesome and includes drills that over time have made me more efficient as a runner. His training platform is easy to use, and he is always readily available to chat when problems or questions arise. So over four months of working with Dwayne, I've been back to five days a week of running, and she's almost back up to her pre-injury weekly mileage and long run distance. And whenever I have a flare up or setbacks, Dwayne reassures me and makes necessary adjustments so that I can continue to progress in my running journey. I've had so much success with him so far that I've signed up for four more months so that he can help me continue getting stronger as I train for the Dopey Challenge in Disney World. And if you're struggling with a running injury or feeling hopeless, you have to reach out to Dwayne Scotty. Of course, you will have to put in a lot of hard work. Yes, you will. Uh, but with Dwayne by your side, you will be able to achieve your goals and more. Um, thanks, Spark Healthy Runner, for bringing the spark back to her running. Um, and update, Dipti did crush the uh, Dopey Challenge. I actually got to meet Dipti in person at the Expo in Disney this past January. Um, and we were able to get those ears right behind me during the marathon and get that nice little dopey metal behind me as well. Uh, so yeah, kudos to Dipti. She really overcame these shin splints that she was dealing with a month. And the other thing that I really think is unique in the model and what we've created here at Spark Healthy Runner with our coaching team is the other coaches on our team in combination with the strength program that I've created as a running physical therapist um, and coach to prevent injuries and then really providing that initial guidance because everyone who joins our program gets a call with me initially and I really kind of diagnose where your current situation is and really provide a plan um, for the coaching team and act as more of the consultant on the team. So Mike was one of those runners who were struggling with shin splints as well. Um, he says, spark healthy runner, coach Kat and Dwayne are an absolute must for anyone wanting to start running, get stronger in running or need help recovering from injuries. I developed um, what was a lifestyle changing injury um, in December. I was immediately sidelined with horrible pain. I was told by my doctor that I needed to stop running, get custom orthotics, consider steroid injections, and told to rest my foot, ankle for four to eight weeks. All mostly outdated advice for this type of injury. I started physical therapy with two different physical therapists in um, February, March, and both were not performing the way I really was looking for. 
And I became desperate and found Spark Healthy Runner, made the appointment with Dwayne, and he immediately encouraged me and provided me a plan with my personalized running coach, Coach Cat. Um, she is awesome, understanding, and always responds to my plethora of questions and always supports me. Having access to an amazing PT like Dwayne makes this program a no-brainer for anyone who wants to start running, improve running, or recover from an injury. I highly recommend Coach Cat, Dwayne, and Spark Healthy Runner. There's simply no one else out there that I found that proved um, the service and care that Spark does. So, Mike, thank you so much. Um, so happy that you have received, um, you know, the care that you've received, and you've been able to finally get over this stubborn injury. And I, I just share those stories, guys, because. I think there's so much information out there and it is so hard to like see through it. Um, and honestly, quite frankly, sometimes you don't get the best advice. And a lot of times I do hear that runners just need to stop running and you know, that's how they're going to heal from their injury. So hopefully this provided you some hope that you don't have to stop running. So again, if you want to learn more about, you know, getting the clarity and focus from our team, then you can just go to learn.sparkhealthyrunner.com uh, forward slash coaching. And I'd be happy to hop on a call with you and see if you're a good fit for how we help runners. Don't forget, get your free download on how to actually treat shin splints. If you want to try it on your own or you're not interested in working with our team to get the clarity, um, if they, this was insightful, helpful for you, um, I just ask if you would copy the link wherever you're listening, share it with a running friend who either is struggling with shin splints or doesn't think they could start running because their shins would always hurt every time they run. Like they can actually start running. Um, so this, in addition to our beginner running guide, can really help someone in your life who you love, who you want to just have a healthier lifestyle and embrace like the thing that we love as runners. And we know all the mental, physical benefits that running brings us. Um, I'm hoping you're doing well. Hopefully you're kicking off the year on the right foot and you've hit your goals the first two months out of the year. If you haven't yet, like, Hey, this is the time period, right? Spring is coming. Nicer weather is coming. So no excuses. Let's get out there. Let's get consistent with our running because that is key to staying healthy as a runner. Um, so thank you for listening to this. As always, let's maintain a strong mind, a strong body, and let's just keep on running. Until next time.